Wind power plays a very important role in our future energy needs. There's resources around us, all around us, that we could be leveraging that we're not. We're just relying on, on some centralized power plant hundreds of miles away. We're just at that, just the beginning of the mass adaption of wind turbines. When this turbine produces power, its initial production of power goes straight into our system. One time we were driving around thinking, geez, wouldn't it be nice to have a turbine on every farm? It's very foolish to discount entrepreneurs uh, and one guy with an idea in his basement because that's where all the really exciting stuff happens. The pursuit of knowledge and understanding is like the creation of art. Both owe a debt to imagination. How will science improve our world? What discoveries will be realized not by providing the correct answers, but by asking the right questions? Welcome to Mindfield. It's quite sad to me that uh, prairie vistas are robbed of a wind turbine at a farm. You can see, you know, maybe a grain elevator still around or, you know, maybe the house or the barn or whatever, but there's no wind, wind turbine on the farm. And I think that that is a tragic uh, condition. I recall uh, Daryl and I were driving around in the countryside or whatever, and then, you know, you could see these old derelict old wind chargers from the 40s and 50s and whatnot that were rusted out, and some of them still had the old turbines still on them, but, you know, none of them are functioning. And I remember Daryl saying, you know, we got to get back to that. We got to get back to um, getting the people to be more independent rather than reliant. Joe and I spent a lot of time in that half ton driving around Saskatchewan. <laughs> but I remember that one time we were driving around thinking, geez, wouldn't it be nice to have a turbine on every farm? And you think about what Bill Gates said, a computer in every home, we'd want a wind turbine on every farm. This is something that can be used on every rural application. I mean, there's, there's probably 60,000 sites in Saskatchewan alone. If you include North America, there's several million probably. If you put several million small wind turbines, as far as, one, as far as I know, no one has ever studied what that would do. And I think that's something that's very important. So he had this idea of, you know, looking at all these old wind chargers and stuff, that he can do this. He can start a company and, and go back to producing wind turbines for people. And, and uh, he started getting to doing a little research, checking out the web, um, looking at other companies, seeing how many are out there, uh, how many are doing it. And he found that there was very, very, very few that are doing small wind. In 1988, I enrolled at the University of Saskatchewan and um, took engineering physics through those years. Graduated in 93. Uh, at the time, there was no jobs in Saskatchewan for somebody like me. It was a very depressed economy. So ended up walking across the street and going to the Saskatchewan Accelerator Lab and did a master's there. Graduated in 95, uh, looked for a job. But I was fortunate that a company called Qualcomm in San Diego came across my resume and they were in a big hiring mode for uh, commercialization of wireless technology. San Diego was turning into the wireless valley, as they called it. Nokia was there, Motorola was there, Qualcomm was there. So moved down there, well, the whole idea was for a year. But one year turned into about eight and a half years. My time in California, I became one of the leading experts in trying to design a process that we could model a very complicated chipset that goes in cell phones so that we could spend less time cycling and trying experiments and more time getting product out the door. We really revolutionized, myself and my team, how Qualcomm did their chipsets. 
Chances are, if you have a cell phone in your pocket or a BlackBerry and it says digital by Qualcomm, my designs or the design team I was in charge of was involved in that. And I had a, a pretty good job. I was making good money. Um, I just couldn't see myself living and dying in California. People in Saskatchewan, when they found out we moved back from California, thought we were totally nuts. I mean, that's like the promised land for people here. But um, yeah, they, they're like, they would shake their head and whatever. But uh, I always tell them it's a great place to visit. But if you live there, you might think differently. It is a rat race. When I said I was moving back to Saskatchewan, I remember talking to a guy and he's like, I've been to Moose Jaw in February. It's like bleak and cold. And why would anybody want to live there? And I told him, for the weather. <laughs> I'm moving back for the weather. I love hockey. I, I don't mind winters. I like tobogganing. My kids like tobogganing. I like skating in my backyard. So it's all good. Like, I like seasons. I believe Saskatchewan and the world is at a crossroads today it's for several reasons. One is that there's a concept called peak oil. Hubbard's Peak. So as oil demand goes up, the, the resources we have and the amount of resources in the ground get reduced. We haven't been finding massive resources. We found some off Brazil and southern Saskatchewan, but that can't keep up with the demand. If you think of the Chinese, one Chinese out of 10 has a car. What if they were North American rates? At, at that sort of demand level, there's gonna be very um, large uh, pressure on the oil supply. Oil, I think, will become more expensive. It won't be gone, but it'll just be more expensive. On the coal side, there's lots of coal around, but the old paradigm of taking coal and just burning it and releasing things like mercury, sulfur, all those other nasty things, not to mention CO2 into the atmosphere, we can't do that anymore. Do we flood more valleys for hydro? Do we build a nuclear plant? Do we try and push clean coal and unproven technology to get that off the ground? How do we get base load in the next 10 years? And utilities need 10 to 15 years to make these decisions, so that's why it's so important right now we make those decisions. Well, in terms of the, the big picture in energy uh, on the planet, initially we were using mainly biomass, wood, etc. We came into a coal age where it was the dominant uh, energy. Then we had petroleum and natural gas. We've emitted a lot of, of uh, pollutants into the atmosphere, some of which last 100 years, and that accumulation is, is uh, driving climate change, which is probably our most serious challenge environmentally. We have to cut emissions by 50% by 2050 in order to maintain the temperature rise to two degrees for the planet, which is seen as a threshold beyond which the damage is, is unacceptable. And so power being the, the largest emitting sector is a major opportunity to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Wind power is part of that clean transition that we need to make. There's 